Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And well, the Lightning Network, a layer two protocol to transfer Bitcoin, released another emergency update after critical bugs on the nodes. This is the second time in less than 30 days. This is why Senator Lummis needs to understand what she shills. We've got Spend the Bits that uses the XRP ledger. It's faster, it's cheaper, it's more secure. And you know, I even had to let Lord Fusitua know one more time. Who is he? He's a big guy. He's one of the members of the ruling families in the island nation of Tonga. He's a self-proclaimed toxic maxi bull. Uh, I tried to get him to take a look at Spend the Bits and its superiority using the XRP ledger. Mm. Uh, he did give me a little bit of time, but I was soon mocked. And, well, that's the end of that. But I got a feeling he's having some second thoughts. This video is wide in the choice of topics that I've chosen and being on the eve of just hearing from Jerome Powell again, the market is anticipating maybe some bad news. All right, everybody, let's get into it. Maybe we start with Coinbase and Ripple. Let's do it. Excellent. So um, just one observation I have always had about Coinbase and um, you know its current legal positioning is the fact that it is a publicly traded company. Right. And during its S1 process and the entire going public endeavor, they were investigated heavily by the SEC. They reviewed all of their documents that are filed as exhibits to their S1. They reviewed their business plan. They reviewed all of their public disclosures. They knew each and every token that was being listed and, and offered on that platform. And yet, they took no issue. If that company was actually engaged in illegal activities, knowingly illegal activities, why on earth would we allow that company to go public? Why on earth would we allow publicly traded pension funds and mom and pop retirement funds, retail investors to be able to invest in such a company? Um, I mean, it was trading XRP right under its nose. So I find that, um, Odd. All right. I want to visit the dates just so it's a little bit clear that actually XRP did not trade under Coinbase while Gensler was in his office. We've got uh, XRP being listed on Coinbase for the first time, February 28th, 2019. It was announced just a few days after the SEC filed the case against Ripple on December 28th that starting January 19th, 2021, that Coinbase would suspend trading in XRP. On January 28th, just a few days after they stopped trading XRP, they announced they would go public. So then we see officially the S1 form was filed. This is what starts to kick off all the investigation work by the SEC. These S1s typically take about 30 days to get initial comments and can take up to 10 more weeks on the long side to get finished. Coinbase went public April 14th, 2021. Gensler didn't assume office until April 17th, 2021. With Congress looking to shift its power to the Republicans and Gensler has fallen under the spotlight for his bad performance by his own agency. I'm sure Coinbase doesn't want to kick a dying dog that could launch a suit against them when he's almost out. So for a relist of XRP on Coinbase, I'd say odds are after Gensler is out. With an announcement from Jerome Powell of the Fed uh, coming in just a few hours, and some questions and answers in a session too that will be very telling. Let's listen to Michael Schumacher. He is formerly with uh, Morgan Stanley, City, UBS. 
Now he's the head of macro strategy at Wells Fargo. Have a listen. What I read in, in the notes, it seemed like you thought that maybe that was, uh, there wasn't much upside to go here in terms of what the Fed is going to give us. It's interesting. Yeah, 75 is done. We don't have to talk about mm -hmm. that anymore. Really, it's the tone. It's, is it 50 next time? Is it 75? Is it we don't know? And also, what does the Fed do longer term? This is what's getting lost, I think, in the whole discussion. How long is the Fed going to stay pat once it gets to whatever that terminal point is? Is it a few months, which is what the market price is? Is it six months? Is it a year? I think it might be 12 months, maybe longer. People are not set up for that. They're not thinking about that. But the problem is they won't believe Jay Powell tomorrow when he tells them. He's got to beat them over the head time and time again. One time, two times, not enough. So you think he's going to be very hawkish tomorrow? I think he'll try, but he won't succeed. And the reason is you've got Q&A. His best performance really was at Jackson Hole. What was that? Eight minutes, leave the stage, no time for <laughs> coffee. I'm sorry, that was it. Drop the mic, I'm done. I'm going to go look at the Tetons or something. But he can't do that tomorrow. So he'll get quizzed. A lot of people ask tough questions. And he'll tend to hedge at some point. And I think that's the issue for the market. If people get just a whiff of an idea that, hey, maybe it's the last 75, and I can't believe we're talking about 50 like it's a non-event, but it's, it would be a relief almost. I suspect the market's going to take that and kind of run with it. And you'll get a fairly short-term rally, let's say, in risk and long-term treasuries, that kind of thing. This is why Jay Powell gets the big bucks, or at least he's on the hot seat. He's going to get a tremendous amount of pressure, he and the whole committee. You can imagine a scenario, and this is what every client wants to talk about in some shape or form. Inflation's down, but still high. Unemployment's up. Maybe it's four and a half, maybe it's 5%. Equity is not so good. What do you do if you're the Fed? One thing you do for sure is get a lot of pushback from Congress. And lots Already of people, that's happened. It is, mm -hmm. and it's going to intensify quite a bit. It's going to put the Fed in a really tough spot. So if unemployment does head up to four and a half or 5%, does Jay Powell really hang in and fight inflation? It's an open question. I think he will want to. The rest of the committee, we're not sure. You heard those last words. We're not sure. And markets, including crypto, just hate uncertainty. So I think it's going to be very volatile until there's more sureness in this market. And moving right along, BNY Mellon had Salent put together a report 40 pages on an in-depth study of digital assets globally. And Singapore and Hong Kong lead in terms of current investing in and exploring tokenized assets, beating the United States by quite a bit. We've got those two little small nations in Asia, small in terms of geographic size and also in population, 75% versus 49% in North America. It's official. Gensler has really set the United States back. My exclusive video and article in the Market Asia section of the Genfinity Lighthouse Report came out today, and it's about Singapore. I'll put a link to it in the description below. In this Crypto Harris poll, it was asked who is motivating the investments. 25% came from financial advisors, 37% came from friends and family, and 41% read, saw, or heard something. And then in the midterm elections, they found that 89% plan to cast a vote. Wow, that's high. And 37% of Americans will consider position on crypto before voting. As I'm wrapping up this video, I just checked Twitter really quick and I'm seeing some crazy headlines all over the board with numbers that don't match regarding XRP escrow release and what was locked back up. This is one of those times, don't rely on the headlines, do your own research. All right, everybody, we're jumping to the fluff. In Japan on October 29th, uh, there was a group of people that set out to break a world record, a Guinness world record. And as wacky as some of those world re records can be, this is, I think, one that is quite interesting. It was a third attempt to gather people by the name of Hirokazu Tanaka, and it had to be all in the same place. The record was set by the name Martha Stewart in the United States back in 2005. That was done with 164 people gathered with the same name. But in Japan, 
from age three to age 80, they did it with 178. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.